Hey guys, what's going on? Jeff here from Films at Home. Today's video, we're gonna do this a little bit different than usual. This is gonna be more of like a voiceover, but we're gonna take a look at the Vava UST Ultra Short Throw 4K Laser Projector. I've been working with this for a while, so I wanna share my thoughts here on the display quality, the setup, um, and sort of what the optimal conditions are for this projector because it was a little bit different than I thought it was gonna be. So stay tuned for all that. All right guys, so here is the Vava UST Ultra Short Throw 4K projector. As you can see, it's a pretty large white box. My Denon receiver is right here. I had to move that to make room for the projector right now, but it is actually a bit larger than the receiver itself. So it was a little bit bigger than I thought it was gonna be. Uh, it's not quite as compact, but it does fit nicely right on a, uh, you know, like a TV console, which is what I have here. So the projector itself is actually right here. It's just this laser portion. That's what's shooting the image. And you can see how close I have it to my screen. I'm getting a large image. This is a 92 inch screen and I'm almost completely filled on that screen. And we're about, you know, what? 18 inches away the projector itself is probably only i don't know eight inches away and then another 10 inches to the actual laser so it's it's pretty interesting it's new technology these ultra short throw projectors and the fact that they can give you a large image like this and the projector sits in front rather than my ben q back here which sits in the back of the home theater is really interesting because you know even in a small room like mine you have the potential to go to a much larger screen and not have to have the room because the ultra short throw can throw a larger screen at a short distance so on the front of the projector here is actually where the speakers are they're behind this sort of uh, fabric opening and then there's some vents on the side i'll let you listen for a second but it's not too loud when it's running almost impossible to hear that, right? And then as we go around, it does have Harman Kardon uh, audio. It's DTS HD supported. It has Dolby audio, and it has three HDMI ports in the back. Now, it's pretty simple and a clean design, right? We just got a power button there, and there's your projector. The rest of it's all white and gray. It would look really good in a modern home theater. So now to give you an idea of the display, this is a little bit tough because my camera's not great at picking this up, but as I get closer, you'll see the detail. I mean, it's, it's really well detailed. This is Joker. This is the 4K Blu-ray. And you know, colors are great, very vibrant yellows and reds here. And as we zoom in on Joker's face, you can see it's very, very well detailed. You know, you can't really make out any edges. You can make out all the different hairs no real pixelation. It's a very nice 4K image overall. I'm you know, very pleased with the way that this outputs 4K. It also worked with my receiver very easily. Simply just plugged it in, hooked up their receiver to it just like I do with a regular projector, and I had no issues with audio. The audio outside of the projector itself is actually pretty good. It's pretty decent. And these front speakers here actually, you know, they pack a pretty decent punch. If you just were listening to this, maybe using it as like a living room TV alternative, those speakers in the front, they're pretty good. You can, you know, you're not going to get Dolby Atmos audio here, but you're going to get a good enough sound that if you were watching TV or didn't really care about the movie you were watching and just wanted to listen to it in a normal environment without surround sound, you'll get a good experience. Now, one thing I did notice as I was watching movies on this was that the projector seemed to flicker or flash. It was doing this weird flickering every couple of minutes. And I'm, I'm trying to catch it here on the video, but I don't know if that's maybe because it needs a firmware upgrade or it could have something to do with the player. Um, I'm really not sure, but I know that playing this disc and viewing it on my other projector, it doesn't have the same issues. So I don't think it's the player. I think it's either, it's some communication between the player and the projector, 
or the projector itself is having these odd flashes, but they do appear every couple of minutes and I've tried to look into why that may be happening and I couldn't really figure much out. So now diving back into the projector a little bit, it does have a couple of cool features. It has some really nice keystone correction, which you can play with an eight point keystone correction, which I'll show you in a second. But one of the really cool features and important safety features on this projector, and I think other laser projectors should use this, is the fact that if you put your hand close to it and it recognizes motion, it will shoot a message up that says, you know, do not stare into the beam, eye protection mode, and it shuts off the laser. It gives a very light laser compared to what it was just displaying while we were watching a movie. So that's really important because these lasers can damage your eyes. And so I thought that was a nice feature. Now there is sort of this little app store on the uh, projector, which is kind of cool. And it has a few different applications. Um, nothing that I really was super thrilled about. Like there's a couple entertainment options, but um, it's really like Disney Plus is on here, PBS, um, but nothing else really that stood out to me. So that, that part of the application is still a needs a little bit of work now as we dive into the settings there's a lot you can do here with the display um, one of the things i mentioned was keystone correction where you can go this is the eight point keystone correction so i can control eight different points you can put this back on four point if you just want to control the corners so there's some nice adjustments there that you can make there's also an electric power focus and you can see that this will start to go out of focus i can put it back into focus so it's got a really nice focus mode. You can mess with the projector if you want to mirror, if you have it on the ceiling, if you flip it, you can do all of that. And you can mess with the refresh rate as well. Um, there's also image parameters where obviously you can mess with sport, custom, standard, theater mode. You can play with different options there to cater the image to what you want to see. So guys, overall, this is not a bad projector, but I do want to talk about a few things. It's a very nice 4K laser projector. It displays a great image, but the setup on this was extremely difficult. I think that the way that these are intended is really to like sit on a floor or you need to have a floor rising screen. My screen, which comes down from the ceiling, I had some real issues with trying to line up the correct height because my screen height is fixed, right? It's fixed to the ceiling height and it needs to come down a certain way. If I have a floor rising screen, you can put that way up or down and have the 92 inch display image within a certain range. If you want it to go up four feet, you know, you have much more to play with when it comes to height. And that's the real issue I had with this projector. It took me a couple of weeks of tinkering with it to really get it to where I wanted it to be. And that's not really ideal, right? It shouldn't take you that long to set up a projector. My BenQ 4K projector, which is uh, in the back of the room, which I use for most reviews, that took me maybe half an hour to get it set up and fully working. So there's something to be said there about the sort of, um, it's new technology, which is always a little bit challenging and always a little bit um, confusing. And uh, you kind of, I would highly suggest going with a floor rising screen. If you have a ceiling drop down screen or a fixed screen, really your only option here because this projector doesn't have any lens shift or anything like that is to move the projector itself whether you have to like build a stand for it put it on the floor mess with the keystone it can be really tricky if you don't have the right platform to sit that on so i'd be very careful with a fixed screen or a ceiling drop down screen a floor rising screen is probably your best bet you're also really going to want an ambient like light blocking screen that was one of the things that vava told me was really important and i do have one my screen does block the ambient light and is an alr screen but they said that was extremely important to get the best picture quality with this type of projector so that's another thing to note now when it comes to build quality and design this thing is really nice i like the white color it looks really cool on a uh, tv console or as part of your home theater it's a very clean modern looking piece of technology but the issues i have with it are the way that you adjust the heights there's two height adjustments on the side and they're just these little plastic knobs that you have to spin and spin and spin to get the level um, to get the projector to level and to get each foot 
up to the right height that you want it at. There's only two feet on it, so they're only in the front, but those plastic knobs are very difficult, very difficult to tighten and loosen and open up the projector, raise the height. And so that part of it was a little disappointing. I'd like to see that design be built a little bit better. There's got to be a better way to do that, but um, it was really difficult to manage just by trying to use your finger. Sometimes it just wouldn't move. I almost had to grab it with my nail and, and pull it. And that was, you know, not ideal. It's really tough to do. So overall, the projector itself gives a great image. For the right environment, this would be a very nice projector. It's a little bit pricey. It's definitely a little pricier than some other 4K projectors that you could get that you know would display from the rear of your room or from the ceiling, but you are paying for the convenience of the ultra short throw. Now, do I see this as a real like living room TV replacement? Not really at this point because of the price and because it's difficult to use. I kind of know what I'm doing with projectors and this took me a very long time to set up and get correct. So if somebody who can go into Best Buy and buy an OLED TV and have a great experience wanted to get into a projector and have that same easy experience, just put the TV on the wall, plug it in, you're ready to go. It's going to be more difficult with a projector like this. So I wouldn't recommend it um, unless you really know what you're doing and you have some patience and you have some flexibility with the layout of your room. So an overall score, what would I give this projector? I mean, I'd give it like a, a three and a half out of five. I think in the perfect environment, it could be a solid four, four and a half. There's some build quality stuff that I didn't love when it came to those height adjustments. The picture is very good, but also on par with most of the other 4K projectors that I've checked out. And it was very difficult to set up and use at times. So even in my room where I have a smaller room, which is the reason I went to Vava and asked if I could do this review because I thought it would be perfect. I had to play with it. I played with it on the floor. I put it up on this TV console. I brought in another table and tried to use that. I had to adjust how far away it was from the screen many times. And it's just because you don't have all that dynamic lens shift and zoom. You don't really have any of that. There's no zoom, there's no lens shift. It's basically, you need to, you need to physically move the projector where it needs to be to get it to display correctly, or it's not going to work. And I, you know, I talked to their support team and they helped me out and they were great and they're very helpful, but um, I do think it's going to be difficult for a beginner. I don't see it as a living replacement. If you have a floor rising screen and you have flexibility in your room to move this thing around, I think you can have a really good experience. But even for somebody like me with a smaller room, I had a difficult time because of my ceiling screen, the drop down screen, and because I just couldn't get it, you know, with, with a smaller room. You have limited options on what I can put in here for stands and tables. And I kind of sit everything on this, the TV console you saw. And so I did my best to make that work and eventually it did, but I had to pull the console out from the wall a little bit further, make some adjustments to the room. And so it wasn't quite as ideal as I thought it would be. I am going to test it again because I am getting a floor rising screen. So we will see if that does make a big difference. I think it may make some bit of a difference, but overall, it's still sort of a difficult projector to place in your room and set up, in my opinion. And so for that, I would probably stick with a rear projection, you know, like my BenQ for the time being. It's easier to use. It's easier to set up. The lens shift and all of that is, is much more intuitive. And so I still don't think the ultra short throw projectors are out and ready to beat these rear projectors yet. So thanks for watching, guys. That's what I have for today's video. This is sort of my first dive into this ultra short throw world. Like I said, I'm getting a floor rising screen, so we're gonna try this again and I'll make an update video. I don't wanna say this is a bad projector by any means, picture quality is great. It just comes down to more of your setup and how difficult this thing can be to dial in. That's what kind of turned me off to it. So I will leave a link down in the description to the Amazon listing. If you do want to buy this and you're interested in it, please use my link. That helps support my channel. I'd really appreciate it. Other than that, remember to follow me on Instagram. Make sure you're subscribed and like this video, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a great rest of your day, and thank you for watching.